Okay, so this video will uh, kind of walk you through how to do some things on the calculator with uh, scatter plots and having two, uh, two variables, two quantitative variables. Um, we'll get into correlation and uh, show a couple things on the, again, on the graphing calculators. So some of the things we should be able to do after this point um, is, is, you know, how do you get the data entered into your calculator? Um, next, we'll, we'll create a graph of the scatter plot, so you can actually see the points and see if there's any um, relationship, you know, apparent, a linear thing or a curved graph or whatever it looks like. Um, <clears throat> the big one that your calculator can uh, really help you with is determine the equation, okay, because we can always make a scatter plot by hand, but coming up with the equation of the line of best fit, you can do an approximate, but to get the actual real deal, you're going to want to use technology, um, use the calculator. And then finally, another big thing that you really want <clears throat> to use the calculator to do for you is describe the correlation. Is it positive, negative, strong, weak, moderate, none? And there's a way um, to find that R value, the correlation coefficient, um, on your calculator. So let's take a look. I have an example put together. Um, <clears throat> this was uh, some data from a couple years ago. I think some of these hamburgers aren't, I don't think are around anymore. Like if I scroll down a little bit, the, there's a big and tasty. I remember seeing that a few years ago, but I think that's kind of, might not be there anymore. But anyways, um, <clears throat> got some different types of hamburgers from McDonald's. And we have data on their uh, grams of carbs and then their grams of fat. And what we want to see is there, you know, is there a relationship between these two? Could you use one to predict the other? So what I'm kind of thinking is let's um, let's just treat these carbs as x values and the grams of fat will be y values, and we're just going to see if we if we were to make a plot here, if I were to put the carbs down here, um, and then the fat grams on the y-axis, you know, if we were to start start plotting some points, would there be a, any sort of trend going on? <clears throat> okay, so the first thing you want to do, um, if you were doing this by hand, you would have to make a scale. Um, and this, in this case, it looks like the, um, if I'm looking at all the carbs, it looks like they're all in the 30s, 40s, roughly. So when you when you set your scale on your on your x-axis, you might want to do a little break in the graph and like start at 30, or something like that. And then you could either go by 35, you know, just pick some nice even scale, okay. And then do something similarly with the the y values. This one, it looks like I could just go by tens, maybe get up to get up to 50 I guess to get everything and just kind of plot the points that way um, but let's do this on the calculator okay. um, so what you want to do you want to go into your uh, graphing calculator and this is um, technically like a statistics kind of thing so we're going to go to the stat menu okay and this is where um, we are going to be able to put the data in it's we just call it edit so I'm gonna press enter on the first option here and it's gonna bring you to a spreadsheet looking thing <laughs> now I went ahead and already typed this data in um, so you can just use the, the directional pad and type the values in. you can press down or press enter now let's say you know what if you had some other data in from a previous problem or something um, and you want to clear that out before you put it in you can actually delete them individually or if you go up to the top here and actually highlight L3 and just press the clear key and then enter it will delete that whole row okay um, now it really doesn't matter if there's stuff in L3 and L4 and L5 that's not going to affect our problem if we're using L1 and L2 so that shouldn't be a big deal but just make sure you don't have any extra numbers you can't have any zeros in there or anything if they're, if they're not zeros in the set Okay, so to actually get the scatter plot, just to get a visual here, um, again, it's, it's, it's a graphical thing. So normally when we graph things, we go to y equals in the top left. Um, this is a stat plot, though. So we're going to hit second y equals, and we're going to go in. It's going to give you, there's three or four plots you can make. Let's just press enter on the first one. We'll go in there. Make sure you turn it on. Okay, and then you'll see the next row is a bunch of different types. And the one we want is this first one here, scatter plot. Um, the one next to it would, would kind of like connect the dots, and we don't really want that because <clears throat> this that's more like a time graph. Um, and then you see the third one's a histogram, and then a box a box plot, uh, and then a couple other things. Um, and then just kind of tell it, you know, where are your x values? We're, we're using list one, and my y values were in list two. You can pick some pretty mark and a pretty color if you have the new calculators. And let's go ahead and take a look at what this thing looks like. And we press graph, and you may get something like that, or yours may even look like this or something, and you're not seeing anything. And that's because of our window. Okay, we need to adjust the window. 
Um, and with the stat plots, there's a trick. If you just go zoom and then the ninth option down there, zoom stat, it's going to fit the window to your points. It's going to look at your points in the list and it's going to give you a good window to see everything. Okay, so we can kind of see the trend. <clears throat> Looks like a positive trend. Um, as we move to the right, the values are going up. Um, if you want to get some of the numbers, you have to press the trace button and, and you can see as you scroll through using the right arrow, it'll go through each of those points so you can see what the numbers are. Okay, but let's see if we can get a line to this and if we can fit, you know, a, a, a line of best fit. So I'm going to go back to the home screen. And what you want to do before you do this, I just want to show you in case when we do the linear regression, um, there's one option you need to, to be turned on. Um, and it's, it's that diagnostics. If, if you're not getting the R and R squared value, um, just go to the catalog down here. You can do this, you only do this one time and it should be set up. Um, so this catalog has a list of everything in the calculator. I'm going to press D there just to scroll down a little bit to uh, the one called diagnostics on. And most of your calculators might have this on, but when you first get them, they're not. So, so if you, when we do our process, if the R does not show up, um, this is what you need to do. Go ahead and turn that on. Just press done. You should be good to go. Okay, so let's let's get our equation here. So let's go back to the stat screen. And this time we're going to go over to calculate. I want to do some work here. <coughs> and, um, and there's two linear regression options here. There's this one, which looks a lot like the MX plus B. And then there's the one down here. Um, and either one is actually okay. We're, you're probably more used to seeing this one again because, again, it, it looks just like the slope-intercept form. Um, in AP stats, as we go on, we're probably going to be focusing a little more on writing it the other way, and we'll talk about that a little later. But either one for now, just as long as you know which one you've picked. Um, so let's just go with option four. Let's go linear regression. That's going to get the linear equation for us. And what we're going to do is kind of just fill in some values. Now, if you have the older calculator software, it's not going to give you this fancy screen. All you're going to see is like it's going to say LinReg. You're basically just going to see this part up here. Okay, and what you're going to need to do is type this and this right after it. So you're going to have to put an L1, okay, and that's found by pressing second and then one. And then a comma, okay, to tell it where your Y values are, the comma button is right by the um, above the 7 and you're going to put list 2 for that's where your y value so that's second 2 okay um, the frequency list we're not we're just going to leave that blank but we do want to store the equation somewhere I want to store it in the y equals screen so that when I when I press my graph I'll see not only the scatter plot but I will also see the um, the line itself so what I'm going to do to get I want to store it in y1 so in the older software, you're going to put that after L2. Here's where that is. It's under the variables. There's a VARS button on here <clears throat> um, up near the, the directional pad. So VARS, we're going to go over to Y VARS, and then into function. We're dealing with functions here. And you'll see the first option there is Y1. Okay, and I think I might have put that in the wrong spot. Let me put this X list needs to be L1. Let me scroll down here store regression equation that's where y1 needs to go so let's put that in there okay and now we're just going to either press enter on the old calculators or press calculate and it's going to give you all of this information here okay and you're going to see the uh, the a value so 1.837 would be our slope that's like the m negative 46.030 depending how far we went around would be the y intercept and then it gives us these other two things. Um, and so far, we've only talked about R. Okay, In statistics, we will talk about R squared in the next section or two. Um, but the R value, again, measures the strength and direction of the, of the linear correlation. Okay, And so by direction, let's say that first. We said when we first showed the plot, it looked like a positive correlation. Notice that R value is positive. And the slope is also a positive number. Okay, So those should always share the same sign, being positive or negative. Um, so make sure you mention something about that. And then as far as strength, if you remember, this is always a value between negative 1 and 1. Okay, With 0 meaning no correlation. 1 is like perfect. Negative 1 is like perfect. Okay, it means all of the points would be right on the line. So that rarely happens. We're, we're, we're up here in the 0.7 range. We're pretty strong. Okay, and usually we say like 0.8, 0.9, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20, 0.21, 0.22, 
or negative 0.8 would be strong, but this is pretty close. So I would say something like it's moderately strong. Um, anything less than 0.5 we would probably consider to be weak. Okay, so it could be weak and positive or weak and negative. Um, but in this case, it's pretty, it's fairly strong. It's definitely positive. Let's take a look at the graph one more time. Let me just show you in the y equals screen too. You see it, it put the equation in for it for us, so we didn't have to type that in, which was really nice. Um, that's why we stored the equation in there. It didn't round it or anything. It kind of left it in its full form. And when we press graph, it's going to show there's our scatter plot as well as our um, line that we just found. Okay, so that's that's part one of the linear regression. Um, and hopefully that helped with some of the calculator tips. And we will pick it up in another video for AP Stats with um, some more details.